Atlanta, New York. I think it's hard to predict, right, Chief? I think I'll do a poll tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll do a poll, and we'll see um, who's going to think who, who, what you guys think. You're lagging. <laughs> I vote St. Louis. You're, you're lagging on, on Memphis, man. Yeah, Memphis, oh, God. We have to do we we'll have to do conferences, man, because I can't. I can only. Right, right, right. Ock, Ock, we should we should do squares. Mm. You know what I mean, and do it by city and the number shot New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. in the first twenty four hours, and I'll and put like ten bucks a square. You talking about like Hollywood squares? No, like a the pool, like an office, like a pool. Oh, yeah. like an office pool. Okay, like a, a dead yeah. pool. You mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, man. Let me let me let me give this some. Let me let me see. Let's see what's going on. Metro police are investigating after a child was shot in her house last night. This is the latest in a long line of minors being injured by stray gunfire in our city. Fox 59's Eric Graves walks us through what we know so far. Just before 9 o'clock Wednesday night, police got a call out here to busy Washington Street on an 8-year-old girl who had been shot in the leg. Police say family said the bullet came from outside the house. I mean... <laughs> what? Like, every city you go to? Like, this is the most common... This happens more... Like little kids in their homes get shot more than other people in other communities combined. Yeah, like total. Probably in the leg more. Not not even just kids <laughs> shot. Kids <laughs> shot in the leg. <laughs> like God damn. And uh, think think about the chances of being hit by a random <laughs> bullet flying through the air. How many fucking bullets are flying through these neighborhoods that hit trees and cars and right. telephone poles? And they always hit them in the leg. Like, <laughs> not always. No, not, not always. always. Not always. But a lot of leg shots. It's hey, like, I, I, earlier today, I was watching the new, the TV, right? And I saw one of the saddest news segments. It wasn't on YouTube. But long story short, it was a, they did an event for kids who were hit, injured by gunfire. You should have seen these kids. I it was fucking sad. You gotta put it in the back chat. Well, came okay. from outside the uh, house. Here's, here's, uh, here's a question for you. Why is there always a shooting at the funeral for a guy who got shot? Because the 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 type of people that he is around in his circle, in his realm, his sphere are those type of people that um he didn't, you know, gang members, click members, crew members. Right. You know, his ops so knows they, right they, where everybody's going to be that right. day. They, they, and they hate him. They probably really don't like the guy that they killed. Yeah, exactly. Like, police say family said the bullet came from outside the house. Having a young child shot's a horrible thing. This was the scene Wednesday night when police took a young girl with a gunshot wound out of her home on Washington Street into Riley Hospital. Police say the family told them the bullet came from outside the home. I believe she's going to be okay. She's in stable condition when she left. We came back Thursday morning to see if we could find more out about what happened. But nobody answered when we knocked. We did see two IMPD officers come by and talk to people as they came out of the home. Neighbors told us hearing gunshots isn't uncommon in the neighborhood. IMPD is asking the community for help solving what happened to this little girl. You never know how much damage it will do to a young girl. At eight years old, it should be focusing on being an eight-year-old kid and having fun. Kareem and Crystal Hines both run youth mentoring programs for boys and girls. They say that eight-year-old is going to need support. That trust is going to have to be rebuilt. She's going to need a positive network to, you know, go back to. Hines sees firsthand how gun violence has impacted our youth, saying kids younger and younger are starting to be desensitized to violence. There's no hesitancy on that and to get involved. In. There's no hesitancy on that and to grab a gun. To be you hear that? There's no hesitancy. Mm. That's what I mean. That's the thing. That's the way I'm trying to tell you. Like, it just it, it happens so fast. They, it's what? Oh. Bang! <laughs> they they they're fucking, and, and, he, and he says young kids. I think what he really misses is young black kids. And to grab a gun, to be curious about a gun, 
what we're wanting to see is that kids return back to doing things that you know kids are supposed to do playing sports engaging in art and music Hines says conflict resolution is a huge problem across the city leading to more people pulling guns and the impacts spreading across. when they say conflict resolution you never hear them talk about that with any other group with, with sons like that's like a it's like a that's like a dog whistle almost you know what i'm saying what, what they would call a dog whistle conflict resolution they also never mention sons specifically when they talk about it yeah because everyone knows like you know if there was a problem re resolving a conflict that led to somebody dying in public no i'll, I'll bet you a quarter 30 percent of the gliders out there think there's just as many white kids doing this shit that is that right there that's what the problem is that's yeah that, i can that, believe that that's, a problem, that's terrifying yeah. though but that's that's terrifying yeah it's you know annoying. what i'm saying that lack of stupidity i mean i mean that that level of stupidity right i might even say it's higher than that because like i'll be around every time i'm around gliders i swear to god they just be aloof they just <laughs> it's like whatever is whatever I'm, <laughs> It's got to be a hybrid because that's the only way this shit can still be going on. Yeah, most of them have, have never been exposed to this directly. Yeah, yeah they're just getting indoctrinated on the fucking regular. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cross generations. We're starting to see the effect not only on the people that are directly involved, but now it's getting to our babies, and this has to stop. Police say they have no new information about a suspect. They're asking anyone with any information to call Crime Stoppers. Reporting Who here on this the guy look like he looks like somebody. The one singer guy in the meme that like Rick Ashley. Never gonna yeah, never Rick Ashley. Yeah, um, what, what's that song? Never um, gonna thang. Never gonna yeah. let you go. I'd, yeah, I'd laugh my ass off that. if he started singing that song. Everybody, yeah, for real, everybody that's on the awesome. news. Well, the thing, the thing about <laughs> that, they were gonna tell was, a lie and hurt you. No <laughs> way, you ever watch that video? There's you no see way. that? You Never see that guy looking like that? Never gonna and let you down. Never gonna turn around <laughs> and hurt you. Yeah, <laughs> sing it, sing it. Yeah, that's when, my I jam, mean, man. The amazing thing about that video is you see that guy. And that voice comes out of that guy's mouth. That's crazy. Yeah. That's the yeah, that guy got part. a hell of a voice, man. And, yeah, definitely. And the beat, the beat is hard too. Man. <laughs> the video's funny too. Hey, oh, I, Andrew Martin, Martin I side, Eric. Huh? I, no, I'm just talking about the chat. <laughs> what they said? <say? laughs> uh, Angel Martin and um, I said, I said Marcy and Nate Campbell's like Marcy knows it. <laughs> he talking about the song. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Damn. Yeah, oh, shit. The chat cracks me up. I know that song. I love that song, man. That song, that, when that song comes on, man, I be jamming, man. Hey, I real quick, I put the video in the back chat, but fair warning, if this is the video that I saw, it's a tough one. Okay. We're going to do that next after Andy. To our headlines here, an investigation is underway in Anderson tonight after someone burglarized a local pet food pantry. The thief was caught on camera, stealing the cash register and causing... All right. <laughs> quick. Who, who did this? I'm gonna say glider because it's a pet food pantry. If it was a regular pantry, a food true, pantry, true. I'm gonna say I would glider. say, well, pet food pantry. I'm gonna say glider. What do you, what do you guys think? I, nah, he he stole the entire cash register. That yeah. man. Okay. Yeah, that ain't glider. hundreds of dollars in damage. But as Fox 59's Max Lewis tells us, the community has stepped up to help them get back on their feet. It started out as any other day for Susan Blank. She showed up at her thrift store, Mitzi's Morsels, on Tuesday morning to get some work done. I walked up to the door and it was unlocked, came in, there was glass all over the floor, and then I saw all the wires over the counter. And then it dawned on me, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we've been robbed. When she checked her surveillance cameras, she found this, a man busting into her shop, trying to open the locked cash register. Glad and when that- You see that white paw? That's a yeah, it's definitely a glider <laughs> pop. <laughs> Shot trying to open the lock. Look at that, look at that white mitt. Yeah, and then okay, also, I, okay, I changed it to meth head. 
Method. Oh, oh no! Nah. Every time a fucking white person does something, they gotta be a meth head. No, nah, this is a fucking criminal, man. Listen, yeah, this man. is a regular run of the mill. Yeah, listen, listen. When she said, when she was so fucking like baffled that she had been robbed, that also was a red flag for me. Like she, she's not saying, "Oh, this stuff happens all the time over here." So that tells me that this is a glider day. They don't have no sons in Anderson. <laughs> they don't have no sons in Anderson, Indiana. Man. And there's nothing there to attract the sun man. Like yeah. nothing. Yeah, for her to for her to like walk in, like like after she, you you show up to your business and the fucking doors ajar, you walk in as a woman. Came in, there was glass all over the floor, and then I saw all the wires over the counter. And then it dawned on me, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we've been robbed. When she checked her surveillance cameras, she found this, a man busting into her shop, trying to open the locked cash register. And when that didn't work, he decided to just take the whole thing with him. And as if taking the register wasn't enough, the thief also stuck his hand right in this donation jar and took all the cash inside. Altogether, Blake says she's out close to a thousand bucks. You that feel so story. violated that somebody's coming in this space that you've You've worked really hard to, you know, provide a great service for our low-income families. Blake started her thrift store three years ago to help low-income people obtain food and supplies for their pets. All the revenue goes to provide free spaying. How did they have low-income people in the all-white town? That doesn't make any sense. All white people are rich. Neutering services. And when word spread about what had happened, people stepped up to help. Who robs a rescue or, you know, a, a not-for-profit, especially around the holidays? Paula Mottweiler runs a local hair salon and had been collecting donations for Blake's store. When she heard what happened, she headed straight there with more than $500 in cash and lots of pet supplies. You could see the relief in her that, you know, it just made her feel better that I think that, you know, someone showed up and cared that This day. woman was already accepted. <laughs> Donations for the for the store before the, the crime crime had happened. Be different, dog. Hey. And it didn't stop there. Blake says the Madison County Community Foundation started a fundraiser and is matching up to a thousand dollars in donations. After falling victim to people at their worst, she says it was wonderful. To and she ain't even put up a GoFundMe. Think about this. This ain't the GoFundMe. This before the GoFundMe. Also, see them at their best. We have to be a little bit more diligent, but there's still good people in the world. There's a lot of good people in the world. In Anderson, Max Lewis, right. Fox 59 News. Blake says they received some tips about the identity of the robber, and those have been forwarded down to police. If you'd like to donate, we have... Okay, same. This place is Indianapolis, man, area, man. It's, it's, it's getting kind of sketchy over there, man. Now, let's see. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Here go one. Okay. A Columbus woman tried to get protection from her husband days before they were both found dead in her home. Court documents show a Bartholomew County judge denied a protection order for Julie Newman just 10 days before she was killed. Fox 59's Courtney Clark.